Muhammad Ali, formerly Cassius Clay, the second youngest man ever to become heavyweight champion of the world. While the metropolis sleeps, he's whisked away from his hotel up the mall and past Buckingham Palace. He goes over roads as deserted as they must have been when the last heavyweight champion to defend his title in Britain, Tommy Burns, saw them 58 years before. 24-year-old Ali and his sparring partner Jimmy Ellis, who defeated him as an amateur in their hometown of Louisville, Kentucky, pound their Hyde Park beat. Angelo Dundee from Miami Beach, Florida, manager and trainer of a succession of world title holders, directs operations as Ali goes into reverse, part of his preparation for fleet-footed boxing on the retreat. Ali holding a small child in his arms, then a football stadium. Meanwhile, the stage is being set for Britain's fight of the century. The football pitch at Arsenal's Highbury Stadium is being covered. The night is dark, the air is chill. The rivals limber up, edgily, almost apprehensively, as a succession of famous fighters of yesterday and today take a bow. Here's America's Rocky Marciano. Marciano gives Ali a pat on the back, then the referee brings together Ali and his opponent, Henry Cooper, in the centre of the ring. As both men return to their corners, a second takes Ali's robe from him. Ali limbers up, and moments later, the bell rings for round one. Ali goes straight into his twinkle toe routine, boxing on the retreat, watching Cooper's every move. He's trying to force the pace from the start. Now Cooper tries to get his jab working, only to find Ali sliding gracefully away. This is the expected early pattern. Cooper, on a 50,000 pound pay night, knows there's so much more at stake. Cooper throws a left, Ali ducks, and Cooper holds onto him round the neck. The ref orders them to break, and they push each other away as they separate. When they met three years ago, disaster came Cooper's way in the fifth round. Badly cut eyes cost him dearly after he'd left hooked Ali to the canvas. And surely, he must be thinking, the longer the fight goes, the greater the risk of it happening again. Cooper blocks a left jab to the head, then Ali unleashes a left hook. Cooper attempts to counter with the same, but Ali backpedals out of harm's way. Ali, for all his superior speed and greater reach, knows well enough the danger lurking in Cooper's left hand. So he clinches the moment he thinks it's coming, but he clinches easily, clearly content that his stone advantage and weight will keep him in command in the inside exchanges. Both fighters bob and weave. Cooper, trying to overcome the problem of a shorter reach, lunges with his left hand to the body in an effort to get to his man. Cooper goes for a left hook, but Ali dodges away. Just watch the way Ali circles gracefully away. His hands held low are always in a position either to defend or to attack. This, of course, means that his opponent has to attempt to make the fight. Cooper has to try to be the aggressor all the time. Cooper keeps his hands higher. He responds to a left jab from Ali with a left hook that Ali easily avoids. Ali ducks low as Cooper tries again with his left, and they clinch. Ali aims a testing jab at Cooper's head, then Cooper appears slightly wrong-footed when he parries a left hook. The two fighters then circle each other, exchanging jabs, until Ali unleashes a fierce one-two. But Ali wastes no chance of aggression himself. The punches flash out at lightning speed. And although they may not be particularly damaging ones, he's making them count. Watch also the way he slides away from those trooper jets. He makes them miss by a fraction, but that's sufficient. Even if they land, he rides them enough to take away the sting. Cooper knows he has to force the issue, but it isn't easy against a rival as slippery as this. At the end of the first round, there's good reason for him to be happy. It's a promising start. Cooper's seconds tend to him in his corner.
Cassius Clay's Greatest Hits, Volume 2. Round 2, and Ali goes into the same routine. Again, Cooper has to try to be the aggressor. Ali dances nimbly round the ring, but Cooper manages to inch him into a corner where he hits him with a left and a right. Ali holds on to him before Cooper gets the chance to use his left again. Cooper takes up position in the centre of the ring while Ali dances round him. Cooper's left arm flails a little as he attempts to block a right jab and they end up in another clinch. Ali clasps his gloves, inviting Cooper to come forward, but the British champion is even more watchful than he was in the first round. Ali rides one jab and parries another, then he gets home with the right hand. These punches don't look particularly heavy because of the speed with which he throws them, but with more than 14 stone behind them, there's no doubt anybody would know when they arrive. Cooper takes a lunging swing with his right, which Ali avoids. But he has better luck with a left-right-left, -right -left, which leaves Ali clinging onto him. Cooper's looking for any opportunity he can find to use his left, and he catches Ali with it again. Ali's head tilts back from the impact. He tries again, but his reach is short. Ali throws a jab and Cooper counters yet again with his left. The fighters return to their corners. The fourth round. And this of course is a round of expectation. In their last meeting, it ended with Ali just having climbed from the canvas. Cassius Clay's Greatest Hits, Volume 2. complains to the referee that Cooper's hit him low. But he's quickly back to the old routine. That of dancing round his opponent in the centre of the ring. Cooper catches Ali with his left, but it's into the body and doesn't trouble his opponent. A left hook to the head that Ali ducks out of almost does though. Cooper goes on the attack again, forcing Ali against the ropes with a flurry of blows. Ali clinches and the ref intervenes. Somehow though, as the fifth round begins, it's apparent that he realises the time has come to step up the tempo. Cooper makes repeated attempts to land his left, but each time Ali's fleet footwork enables him to evade it. Finally though, one hits home. Then another left, followed up by a right, has Ali briefly on the back foot. But Cooper responds with a succession of solid left-hand punches. And while Ali shrugs them off, there's not much doubt that some of them hurt. Cassius Clay's Greatest Hits, Volume 2. At the sound of the bell, the fighters return to their corners. Cooper's chest and neck is wiped with a wet sponge. Now for the sixth round, and they've already gone further than their last meeting. Cooper is still going forward. But suddenly Cooper finds himself in trouble. See that sharp right hand from Ali, then another left hook, followed by a right in rapid succession. Harold's what must be the beginning of the inevitable end. Ali dances around Cooper before delivering the lethal combination. Cooper's left eyebrow spurts blood. It's gushing out just like a burst pipe. Undeterred, Cooper goes on the attack. He closes in on Ali, but before he can get in a punch, Ali ducks and grabs him round the waist. 
The ref separates them and looks at Cooper's eye. The referee takes a look at the damage and allows the fight to go on. Ali piles on the pressure, raining punches in all directions and still the blood spurts everywhere. The fighters exchange a frenetic flurry of blows. Blood courses down the side of Cooper's face. Ali lands some vicious punches with both hands. But Cooper refuses to give up and comes back at him. Ali lands a left hook which appears to rock Cooper and he clinches. The ref intervenes. A second look and it's all over, it's all over. A disappointed Cooper returns to his corner. Muhammad Ali is the winner after 1 minute 38 seconds of the 6th round and is still heavyweight champion of the world.